The narcissist discarded you but it makes them crazy and suffering. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our channel. Today, we're delving into a captivating exploration of the aftermath when a narcissist discards you. Buckle up for a revealing journey into their suffering, the mysterious workings of karma, and the unique insights that define this experience. From the empath's perspective to the narcissist's struggles, we're covering it all. So, sit tight, hit that like button, subscribe for more insightful content, and let's embark on this enlightening ride together. The narcissist perhaps believed that they could find happiness. They convinced themselves that they could find joy without your presence. They were under the impression that they could easily discard you. They had a vision of a wonderful world, a place where the grass appears greener. They gazed upon you and made the judgment that your grass was tainted, and as a result, you were tainted. They planned to move ahead, to discard you, and to pursue happiness. This was their internal dialogue, this was their conviction, and they acted on this belief, despite all that you had done for them. The love that you showered them with, all the effort you put into the relationship, was significant. You truly endeavored. You tried to mend things during challenging periods. You generously offered your love to them. You are one of the chosen ones, an empath, possessing highly empathetic capabilities that enable you to bond with people quite effortlessly. You have the capacity to feel others suffering, and you lent your support to this person. However, over the journey, they took your efforts for granted, they dismissed what you offered and looked elsewhere. It might not have necessarily been another person. They possibly just felt the urge to discard you. But let's look at how the world functions, shall we? We reap what we sow, and we've been sowing seeds of good nature throughout our existence. We must acknowledge that we're not perfect. Yes, we have our flaws, but God didn't create us as perfect beings. God placed us in this world to undergo a test, to discern what's good and bad. So, while we may not be perfect, we are a work in progress. However, these narcissists are thoroughly toxic. They've been sowing seeds of hate and destruction. They've been engaged in this destructive pattern from the beginning. Now, the concept of karma is that it eventually comes back around, and when it does, it's going to hit them squarely in the face. The first part of their facing karma, at least in relation to us, is that they've been following this pattern in repeat cycles before. It's important to understand that the narcissist in question isn't unfamiliar with the concept of discarding people. It's a cycle that they've repeated countless times before, leaving a trail of heartbreak and suffering in their wake. They've met other individuals, individuals like you, and have sown their seeds of hate and discontent without a second thought. They've discarded those people, just as they discarded you, and moved on swiftly, seemingly without regret or remorse. What's interesting, and perhaps a bit confusing, is how they often seem to land on their feet. They discard someone, and then, almost like magic, something better comes along. But why? How does this happen? The answer lies in their encounter with you. You see, when they met you, they met their savior. You were the person who was destined to enter their life at a critical juncture, a person who could offer them an opportunity to change their destructive ways. Whether you believe it or not, you were their savior, their chance at redemption. The universe, in its infinite wisdom and forgiving nature, noticed this narcissist. It recognized their destructive pattern and decided to intervene by sending you into their life. This was a twofold plan. On one hand, you would benefit from the experience, learning, and growing from it. On the other hand, it offered the narcissist an opportunity to change, if they genuinely desired to. Unfortunately, they chose not to seize this opportunity. Instead, they fell back into their old habits. They devalued you, smeared your name, and played games with your emotions. All the while, they continued to sow their seeds of hate, seemingly oblivious to the fact that every action in this world has consequences. You simply cannot go about life in a reckless, harmful manner without facing severe ramifications. It's easy to believe that people can get away with causing harm to others, especially when you see it happening time and time again. But what's not often seen is how karma operates. Karma has a unique way of balancing the scales. It might not strike in an obvious, direct manner, but it always comes back around. 
It can hit the narcissist from the inside out, affecting them in ways we can't necessarily perceive. We might not be able to connect the dots, to point at a particular event and say, this happened because of that. Sometimes we can, but more often than not, karma works in mysterious ways. It's important to remember that while the narcissist may appear to be thriving after discarding you, their actions are not without consequences. The cycle of meeting, sowing seeds of hate, and discarding will continue, and eventually, karma will catch up with them. They may not realize it now, but their actions will lead to regret and suffering, and when that time comes, it will hit them like a ton of bricks. It is essential to comprehend that the narcissist's decision to discard you is an act that is driving them to the brink of craziness. They are consumed by the notion that severing ties with you would bring them joy. However, the reality is far different. Every day, they are tormented by the thought of you, haunted by the memories of you. Everywhere they turn, they are met with reminders of you. This, in essence, is their karma. They might put on a show, acting as if they are unaffected, pretending as if they have moved on. However, the truth lies beneath their facade. The reality is that the act of discarding you is slowly crushing them. I cannot stress this enough. I've seen it unfold in my own journey. In my journey, I was subjected to the harshest defamation imaginable. I was arrested, detained in a police cell. She almost had me imprisoned. To me, at that time, that was the worst form of slander, especially when it involved the police. Despite this, the narcissist reached out to me after four years. Consider the courage it took for the narcissist to make contact after such a length of time. They utilized a fake profile to contact me, but it was clear that it was them. They did this repeatedly. They were left with no choice but to attempt to rekindle our relationship, as I am an empath, just like you. They will never find something superior. Can you not see that? They assumed they would find something better because when they met you, you were a significant improvement over their ex. I'm not implying that you need to be the most attractive person physically. I'm referring to your spirit, your soul, your essence. That's where the genuine beauty lies. The true beauty resides within the depths of your soul. The seeds of goodness, kindness, and love that you are sowing will return to you in abundance. The way it repays you in abundance is by highlighting their suffering. They are suffering. I've created a video on the topic of the remorse felt by the one who ends the relationship, which I encourage you to watch. It's an insightful video that explains what happens even in regular, non-narcissistic relationships. However, it is particularly relevant to the narcissist. The narcissist is spiraling into a state of madness. They are losing their grip on reality because they feel a deep regret, a sentiment of oh my god, I let the best thing that ever happened to me slip away. I had someone who loved me. It's not easy to find someone out there who will love you unconditionally, like we did. They may find people who are willing to engage in physical relationships, but finding someone who will love you unconditionally is not a simple task. They only realize the extent of what we did for them after the fact. They are oddballs, engaging in strange actions throughout their lives. They surround themselves with a group of enablers, their flying monkeys, who provide them with sympathy and support for their actions. Despite their regret and suffering, they continue to live in a state of denial, oblivious to the consequences of their actions. The interesting twist here is that the narcissist, after some time, begins to harbor resentment and dislike towards these very enablers. This happens because, deep down, the narcissist realizes that they were led down a path that was not in their best interest. This realization brings them a great deal of discomfort and regret. This is something I know, not merely as a theory, but as a truth I feel deep within my soul. The narcissist's worldview is fundamentally different from ours. They don't have a deep faith in a higher power, be it God or the universe, like we do. They don't have that spiritual anchor to ground them and give them perspective. While some may have a semblance of spirituality, it's more often than not skewed towards the darker, more negative aspects. They neither trust the plan of God nor the plan of the universe. They feel that they are alone in the world, left to their devices, and this fuels their selfish and self-destructive behavior. It's important to note here that when I refer to God or the universe, I am referring to the divine intelligence, 
the universal creator that has our best interests at heart. We all have different ways of acknowledging and recognizing this divine presence, and that's a debate for another time. I believe in unity, in the common thread that binds us all together. Now, let's turn our attention towards the aftermath of their decision to discard you. The narcissist, despite their initial bravado, begins to struggle. They start spiraling into a state of craziness, haunted by memories of you, plagued by constant reminders of you in their everyday life. This is karma in action, slowly, but surely turning the tables on them. Karma, however, is subtle in its workings, and doesn't always reveal the full extent of its effects to us. In my personal journey, I've had glimpses of what lies beneath the veil. We, as empathetic and compassionate beings, would naturally feel bad for them, despite everything. They were, after all, a significant part of our lives, and we loved them with all our hearts. Our instinctive response to seeing someone we care about suffering is to want to alleviate their pain, to help them heal. However, it's important to remember that it's not always in our best interest to see them suffer. If we were to witness the full extent of their suffering, we would get emotionally entangled, and that would hinder our healing process. That's why the universe, in its wisdom, only gives us glimpses of their suffering. This allows us to embark on our healing journey without being burdened by their pain. In my experience, it took six years of grueling emotional work to reach a point where I could speak about this openly. In those years, I went through the intense pain of trauma bonds, of longing for them, of feeling resentment and hatred. It was a long, arduous journey, but through it all, I felt a divine force guiding me, reshaping me. It gave me a newfound spirit, a resilience that I didn't know I had. Now, I stand at a point where I can look back at everything and see it for what it was. The last words I said to them no longer hold any power over me. I have moved on, and in doing so, I have found a deeper understanding of myself and the world around me. It's a vivid memory, the moment when you looked them in the eyes and said something you never thought you would. The words were harsh, cutting, and far from anything that would usually cross your lips. You know how startling it was, because it went against your very nature, you are not a person who thrives in misery or propagates negativity. Yet, there you were, standing face to face with a narcissist, someone whose very essence seemed to be composed of these very elements. They are the ones who are truly miserable, truly horrible. Now, they are suffering miserably, and it's driving them to the brink of craziness. To understand the gravity of their suffering, you need to peer beneath the surface, beneath the veneer they so carefully maintain. Look at your situation from a different perspective. Realize that by choosing to discard you, they have set themselves on a path that is leading them towards a mental breakdown. Their life without you is filled with an insurmountable amount of suffering. Take a moment to reflect, to really delve into what's happening. You will find signs, subtle indications that they are in pain. I'm certain of it, because I've seen these signs myself. Perhaps you have already seen more signs than I have, maybe even witnessed their suffering firsthand. However, despite these distressing sights, it's crucial that you guard your heart. Do not let their pain affect you. Do not feel bad for them or harbor any remorse. Do not let it disrupt your newfound spirit. You are in the process of growing, evolving spiritually. This spiritual evolution is a journey you were destined to embark on. It's as if a divine plan had been set into motion when you met them, a plan designed to use their negativity to trigger your transformation. You have the ability to take a terrible situation and transform it into something good, something meaningful. The narcissist, however, lacks this ability. They are stuck in their current state, unable to turn it into something positive. This is what sets us apart from them. When we encountered such a twisted, narcissistic individual, we managed to find value in the experience. Despite the illusion, we loved them with all our hearts. At our lowest point, when we were completely taken in by their love bombing and the illusion of a shared relationship, we still managed to bring something unique to the table. This uniqueness, this special quality that we brought to the relationship, is something they will not find in anyone else. There are aspects of the relationship that were solely due to your influence, and these are aspects they will never find elsewhere. Do you see it now? Can you see the truth of it? They will not find what they had with you in someone else. 
Their circumstances have changed. They're older now, perhaps with more children. I'm not saying that age or children are negative factors. What I'm trying to convey is that from the narcissist's perspective, these changes make it harder for them to maintain their facade, their artificial light. They have a history now, a baggage that they can't simply discard. This baggage makes it difficult for them to charm someone new, to ensnare them in their web. They no longer possess the allure they once had, the ability to draw people into their lives. They're left to suffer the consequences of their actions. You are a unique presence in their life, a chosen one, an empath. They will never find someone like you again. They will never find someone who can match your level of empathy, your level of understanding. I say this with utmost sincerity. I want you to realize this, to know it deep within your heart. It's a harsh reality, one that can be difficult to comprehend and even harder to accept. They will never find someone like you again. This truth, as stark and plain as it is, is something they grapple with every day, a constant reminder of their loss. Yes, they are enduring a significant amount of suffering, their lives devoid of your comforting presence and empathy. In the face of such pain, you would anticipate an apology, an expression of regret for their actions. Yet, they find themselves incapable of uttering those words, of making that gesture. You see, many of them lack the understanding of how to apologize, let alone the courage, to do so. The idea of facing the consequences of their actions, of confronting the damage they have caused, is simply too daunting for them. The mere thought of apologizing to us, especially after all the pain and anguish they have inflicted, is enough to deter them. They are fully aware that an apology would likely result in us shutting them out completely, creating a barrier they can't penetrate. This knowledge paralyzes them, preventing them from taking that crucial step towards reconciliation. However, there are those who muster the audacity to return, to plead and beg for forgiveness. Yet, I urge you not to yield to their pleas. My warning to you is stern and sincere, resuming a relationship with them will only lead to more pain, more suffering. The outcome will be far worse than before. You are now under the aegis of your own protection, steadily embarking on a path of spiritual evolution and healing. It's a journey that promises to bring about significant development in all aspects of your life, be it physical, spiritual, mental, or financial. This path is laden with opportunities for growth and prosperity, paving the way for a myriad of good things to come into your life. Thus, I implore the divine powers, be it God or the universe, to shower you with blessings, to make this journey of healing and growth as smooth and rewarding as possible for you. I do not claim to possess the power to influence such matters. My intention is merely to voice my support, my hopes for your recovery and well-being. I sincerely mean this, from the bottom of my heart. You see, we share a unique bond, one forged in the crucible of shared experiences. We are all together in this, resonating with each other's stories and struggles because we have all been subjected to similar experiences. So remember, they are suffering too, and keep an eye out for the signs. To conclude, I urge you to engage with this video. Please hit the like and subscribe button to show your support. Thank you for watching and see you in another video.